you, Father. We just worship you in spirit and truth today. We thank you, God, that you are with us that you will never leave us or forsake us and we thank you that we're here to worship you and to grow in relationship with you first and then with each other I pray today that you anoint the word I pray that truth goes in and change happens I pray father that we come out of who we are in this world and not be that person anymore be who you've called us to be in Christ Jesus in Jesus name all God's people said Amen. Amen. Okay, God is so good, isn't he? So, Elsie, I need you to look up Matthew 10, verse 19 and 20. Um, and then I believe uh, David needs to go to Jeremiah 50. Right around there. Right around there. Right, Tammy? Jeremiah 50? Where is it? Joshua 6.15. Oh, Joshua 6.15. Sorry, I got the wrong one. Close, David. That's close. Say that again. Joshua 6.15. See, see, I had her go and find this earlier because God's going to do something in the house today. That's, Amen. We, we, uh, we like it when it's his church and we let him do what he wants to do. Amen? Okay, and so... Um, we got together and practiced this week for the, the two live songs. And then, um, you know, sometimes when you come together and you're trying to pull things together by the Spirit and just allowing God to do what He does. First of all, last week was the first time we heard this song, um, As It Is In Heaven Here. And so immediately I knew that, that uh, it was an anointed song and that we needed to sing it live. And so I got a hold of Dave as it got closer to practice and said, yeah, I feel like we're supposed to do this. And so the three of us got together and um, we ended up with you came because, you know, you know, he has come and that's the reason that we're here, that because of Jesus, he came and because of him, we've been united with the father and it's so important. And so then as believers, you know, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. And so this is what we're, we're being transformed on this earth and we're just allowing the presence and the heavenly things that we're learning and that we're connected to by the spirit of God. To first of all change us cause us to change and then he brings it through us and that's where we make a difference that's why you could do what you could do and they're like oh, we just can't believe that anybody handled it that way and only James knows how many tears you shed over it but you still chose to trust God because there was something within you that knew um, no matter what it looked like and that's because you've been you've been being transformed by the spirit of God's love and so your trust for him is quite great and so that was quite the the walk that you had but when we we stay with him in step it doesn't mean that everything's going to be okay we all have issues and problems going on within our lives but God gives us ability to overcome them amen and so um, so anyways I want to um, start out with a song um, oops wrong one uh, I'll do it on my phone. And then Dave, let's see. Um, so let me just start out with the song. Uh, just when I was in my office, just before coming out, um, I heard, um, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. And so I knew immediately, because why would I be thinking that? We didn't even sing that in pre-service. So I went and got the song. So I just want to say this. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. And one of the ways that you can let it rise is, first of all, fan those flames. Fan those coals, I'm going to say, into flames. Amen? These are gifts and things that God is doing in our lives. But you know what? Maybe, <coughs> excuse me, through the week, we get a little dry. We're not a lot of wind, and we forget to fan into flames. And so the glory of the Lord isn't really rising upon us. Everything else is, right? And so I just want to remind you today, and so what I want to do is I want to um, 
be obedient to God and um, just let him do a couple unusual things today. And one of them is David's going to come up and he's going to take the floor. <laughs> he's got the shortest, um, shortest time ever to say, come up here and bring the word from the walls of Jericho. Amen. Okay. Yay. Nice. <laughs> and Elsie's on deck. I love you. I love you too. Okay. Can I put this on your ear for you? Yeah. Now you might. No, that's not going to work. I'll just use can, a microphone. Can you hold the. Yeah. yeah. And you can adjust it for him. I got big ears. Well, I got little ears. <laughs> so let's do it. Okay. David, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> so it's uh, in service, in pre service today when we were actually doing praise and worship. Um, we were standing in the circle, actually saw the walls, and, and God said that we're supposed to shout down the walls that we see, no matter what that is. And, um, you know, he showed me some things that I needed to shout down, like anger, um, allowing my week to creep up on me without realizing it, you know. So I'm going to read this, and I'm just going to let God go to where he goes. So it says in Joshua 6.15, but it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early, about the dawning of the day, and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day, only they marched around the city seven times. <clears throat> you know, sometimes the Lord wakes me up really early. He has been recently anyway. Um, and I, and I, it was irritating at first, I'm not going to lie, you know, because... I already go to bed early because I get up early to go to the gym. You know, Tim and I, you know, work out every morning. And I didn't really understand it. And then a few days ago, he woke me up at 3.30. And um, again, I was like, for real. And But I knew right away that there was a reason why. God wanted me to get up in the morning and start shouting some walls. And I didn't actually shout because I live in an apartment. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want my, my landlord. But in my heart, I definitely did. You know, um, and what I realized is for my walls, my walls get built up by my thoughts. Yeah. My walls get built up by my thoughts. Um, it says in the Word that we're supposed to take authority over our thoughts. You know, I started, and it's, <laughs> started reading a book recently, Battlefield of the Mind. Yeah. And um, it is, it's been a game changer uh, for me, honestly. I had no idea. You know, it says that... Uh, it says in there that the, the mind and the spirit work together. You know, the mind is the window to the spirit, right? And the enemy knows that. And he wants us to recognize, God wants us to recognize that that's where the enemy comes in, is, is with our thoughts. You know, it'll sound, my thoughts sound exactly like me. They always do, they always have, they always will. But the thing that I'm learning as I dive deeper into the word is the content of what is being said. I, my voice, that says things like, you're not good enough, or you shouldn't be doing what you're doing, or work is too much, or why do you keep trying to do that? It's never going to work. That's, that's not God. That's not God. That's my voice, but it's the enemy putting those thoughts in my, in my mind, you know. So God gave us the authority to shout those down. And if it takes seven times, if it takes 75 times, keep circling the walls. Shout them down. Because they will come down. You know, God showed me again that there's no wall too big for Him. But there's walls, any wall is too big for us. I can't shout a single wall down in my own power. Right. I can't tear at it. I can't claw at it. I can't hammer at it. It's not going to come down. No matter how hard I tried. And I'm going to get tired while I try to do it. Mm -hmm. But God, it just takes one yes and that wall already starts to crack. It doesn't matter what is the contents of that wall. God will bring it down as long as we believe that he will and we say yes. I think that's it. I think, keep reading. Keep reading? Okay. Okay. So on the seventh time it happened, when the priests blew the trumpets, that Joshua said to the people, Shout for the Lord. Shout for the Lord has given you the city. <laughs> When we have breakthrough, when God shatters those walls, it is our duty to share it with others. 
to let them know that that wall has been brought down, not by my might, not by my, my, my power, but by God's power. Amen. It's our duty to let people know, hey, I overcame drugs and alcohol by the grace of God. I didn't do it, God did it, but it's not in my life anymore because God shattered that wall. I overcame criminal mindset, not because I did it, but because God changed it. Amen. And it's our duty to share those things, whatever it is. Hey, I overcame lust. Hey, I overcame anger. Hey, I overcame grief. I overcame self-condemnation. But I didn't do it. God did it. So, you know, he's, he's telling us here to shout for the Lord has given us the city. What is the city for us? What is your city? That's right. Everybody's is different maybe in our mind, but the city is the kingdom of God. Amen. It's that joy that only God can provide. It's that joy that only God can bring. It's the joy that is only sustainable is the city of God. So it says, Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to des destruction, it and all who are in it. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, and she, she and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that went, that, that we sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things. Least you become accursed when you take of the accursed things, and take the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Don't pick it back up. Don't put the wall back together yourself. I do it all the time. It cracks, and I get nervous. I'm like, I'm used to that wall being there. I don't know what to do if that wall wouldn't be there, you know? Um, a big one for me, my whole life was uh, anger. It was, it was a protection for me. It kept people at arm's length, you know? It allowed me to not allow people to get close so I didn't get hurt. So when that wall started to crack, when I accepted Christ into my life, it freaked me out because I didn't know. I said, what is, I didn't really even know what happiness was, or joy, or contentment, or peace, or, or comfort, or, or feeling secure. And when that wall cracked, I put it back together. I started to patch it back up, you know. Um, I carried anger around until recently, quite heavily, because I thought it was the only thing that was going to protect me. Well, no. God protected me. God protected me. The anger, all it did was weigh me down and keep me from hearing the Spirit. God is always speaking to us, but is the room too loud for us to hear? Nice. So that's all I keep hearing today is what's our wall? Claim it. Like I said, we're burning it tonight. We're burning it. That incense goes up to the Lord. Those ashes get turned into beauty. What's your wall tonight? Because it doesn't matter what it is. God wants to get rid of it. There's no shame in it. That's right. There's absolutely no condemnation in it. Shame, condemnation, guilt never led to growth. Because it didn't come from the Lord. Love came from God. Truth came from God. Favor came from the Lord. But not guilt and condemnation. I know tonight I'm going to lay some things down that, you know what, I've laid down many, many, many times. But that's okay. Because at least I'm still laying them down. That's how I look at it, you know. God understands we're going to build some walls back up. He just does, and He still loves us regardless. And He's still going to shout those walls down with us, no matter what they are. Amen. No matter what they are. No. Amen. Amen. That might be it. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Let me just wait and listen for a second. Yeah, let's let's okay. jump down to verse 20 and read through verse 20. Okay. So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with great shout, that the, well, that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up to the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. The people around us want to help us tear the walls down. In this, in this church, I know they do. They're right beside us, walking it the whole way. You know, for a lot of years, I didn't want to share what was going on in my life because I was afraid that I'd be judged. I, I haven't felt judged in this church. And I've been here over five years, and I'm not going anywhere. Because I'm loved here. Because God's love is here. Yeah. You know, in the edge of the sword, what is the sword? It's the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is on the walls in this church. 
The Word of God is in the heart of the people in this church. There's nothing sharper than that two-edged sword. And the people that stand next to you in Christ are going to help you defeat what you need to defeat. They're going to stand beside you in agreement. They're not going to bring you down. They're not going to tell you it's okay to be angry. They're not going to tell you that. And if they do, probably need to check themselves. Because righteous anger has gotten me more trouble than anything else. <laughs> Feeling like I had the right to be angry pretty much led to every single <laughs> arrest that I had. Honestly, you know? Feeling like I had the right to do what I was going to do. I've never had a person in this church say, yeah, Dave, go ahead and do that. You should probably, yeah, you deserve to do that. That's never happened. That's never happened. And I don't think it will. Right. You know? Amen. So they're, they're there beside you to help you. That's good. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. All right. All right. So what? So let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praise of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Woo! Amen. Thank you. You want your Bible? Sure. Okay, awesome. So he shut me off. Okay, I'll turn this back on. All right. Can you hear me? Good. All right. So if, if you think about it as he was reading, and obviously what I wanted to do is just keep him going and keep him going because that's part of discipling and just bringing people further in, letting them hear the Spirit of God move through them as we could tell it was moving through Dave, even to the point where he took that part of the Scripture where it talked about um, the sword. And I've never heard it really put in that term before because I always think about when the walls come down and you go in and you take the city you get the victory and everything is good you know and like if you get rid of anger peace is on the other side of that wall if, if you're getting rid of lust you know you're on the other side of that wall is victory over that but it's so true that we need to have people this was an army that shouted it down it was God that did it he gets all the glory, but he assembled an army to keep his people together, and they were unified. They were quiet and did what they were told to do, and then when they all shouted, everything happened just the way it was supposed to. Amen? So the other thing that was laid on my heart today is, is Miss Elsie. And Miss Elsie, this is not a scripture that I gave you so that you could preach it. I gave it to you so that you would know that God would be with you. So come on up here. What I gave her was, but when they deliver you up, don't worry about what you should speak. For it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speaks, Elsie, but the spirit of your father who speaks in you and through you. So let's just see what she's going to speak. This is one of the fun things about coming to River of Life sometimes when we do weirdness like this on a Thursday. So I don't have to speak on this scripture. Unless you want to. Yes. But God gave me something this morning. Something I've never done. And I brought it with me. I put it on my Bible. And it pertains to what's going to happen tonight because we've come up here always and give to God what is on our heart. And sometimes it can even be a dream. And I shared that tonight in pre-service, but I brought my own from home because it truly is on my heart tonight before anybody leaves this sanctuary to please come here. If you have something buried in your heart that you can't overcome, my Lord can. Amen. But you've got to give it to Him. And, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke through me tonight at pre-service and He said, when you come up and bend those knees, it's already done because it's in your heart and the Word of God says that the Holy Spirit knows every man's heart. 
That's sobering. He knows everything. You might kid it. You might kid yourself. You might kid someone else. But the Holy Spirit is the only one who knows every man's heart. So I'm saying to you, in the Lord this morning gave it to me, to come Oh, this is so exciting to me because when, when pre-service, when they asked us to go around the circle, this is what I gave and spoke. So my heart is saying to you, I wrote, first of all, I wrote here all the way because I'm going all the way Amen. with God. There's right. no other way. He is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. This, this is the truth. He is his word. And so to me it is to go all the way. And I wrote here, recommit. Because I'm recommitting that every chance I get. And especially if I'm carrying something heavy and haven't dealt with it. We, we need to. I need to. You need to. But... Give him also a dream. If something's in your heart, I have no idea what your dreams are. <clears throat> Excuse me. I don't really have anything because I'm his. And what he has for me, it's okay with me. That's just how I look at it. I might be a little naive that way, but I trust him. It says in Job, though he slay me, yet... Will I trust him? That's great if you can have that kind of trust because I'm standing on the Word of God. The Word of God is sure and true and righteous altogether. <clears throat> so I guess what I'm saying to you tonight may take a little time, Pastor, or hand it out. To, I even thought of going around with a notepad and a pen and just giving it to you if you don't want to come up here. But bring it up and let God burn it. Give him something that's in your heart tonight. That's my heart's cry for tonight. So. Amen. Thank you. Do you want me to hand? No, they can get them there. So they can even use the, um, what do you call it? The envelopes. Um, but, you know, nobody should be afraid or, or not come up if you're being led to come up because the only person you're hurting by not coming up is yourself because um, God wants us to be obedient before any sacrifice. Amen? So listen, you guys, we're actually going to close with um, Let It Rise. Tim will get it ready, and I'm just going to talk for just a couple of minutes because I just really felt... Um, when I was in pre-service, I was pressing in and asking God about what exactly he wanted tonight. And he wanted something different tonight. And so that's why we, we did it. And I did not want to let anybody know in advance. David, you weren't to know in advance, but God already put it on your heart. And Elsie, to be able, she was going to come up and go with the scripture I gave her until she heard that it was really just about trusting God to fill her mouth. Um, so that, because that's what he does for us. Amen? Amen? So before we go any further, before um, we um, actually worship God with this amazing song, because we're going to let the glory of the Lord rise among us. And so the glory of the Lord is really our relationship with him. And the more that we get rid of us and the sin in our lives and the things that are happening and the worries that we're carrying and all those burdens, we need to lay them down. Because I want to tell you, you're not equipped. I'm not equipped to carry the burdens of this world. Um, and so the way that you lay your burdens down is through relationship with Jesus Christ because he died to take the burdens. He says, cast all your cares upon me. But you've got to be willing to do it. Like really visualize yourself giving these things over to the Lord so that you're not carrying them. I promise you it does work, but I've been walking in it all week long. And because I've been walking in it all week long, the Holy Spirit 
um, has been honoring his word working through me. Um, and so I don't necessarily always like what I'm walking through, but when the Lord starts giving me scriptures, when he starts giving me these different parts and pieces, I know if I allow him to be the person that he is in my life here, if I allow it to happen here, I'm going to walk in a better position with the Lord because it's we're attached by the heart. You know, our most inner being, our spirit, is attached to the spirit of the living God. But at the same time, we've got to remember that God wants us to be willing to trust him and his word and what it says. And so obedience is better than sacrifice. Many of us make sacrifices for God all the time, but he wants us to be obedient. I don't know what obedience looks like for you in your life, but I know what it looks like for me in my life, and it's only really between me and God. By the way, David, you don't like to be told what to do. Just thought I would throw that out there. Because as he was speaking, I was hearing that, like, David doesn't like to be told what to do either. That's another thing he's shouting down, because there's times he, he that anger will try to flare up uh, when he's being told what to do, but what he does with that, he does the opposite. He'll come and say, geez, I didn't react right, I, you know, and, and just take it by the horn and and apologize and so it's not easy because it makes you be humble but the Lord draws near to the humble and he resists the proud so if we be obedient and allow him to do what he wants us to do we're going to keep going and we're going to have the victory and so you heard uh, David's heart you heard Elsie's heart it's really all about tonight and getting to the cross it's all about allowing the Lord to do exactly what he died for and that's take the burdens that you're carrying because you're not equipped to handle them. You'll get angry, you'll get mad, you'll get into poor me, you'll, you'll do things you wish you didn't do because you're carrying things that you shouldn't carry. And so today I want to challenge you along with the two people that were up here prior to me. And if you are carrying something you should not, you're carrying a burden that you should not, and it's constantly on your mind, it's time to give it to God so that you can have your mind renewed, so that you can walk in a new place. Because the Lord is speaking to each and every one of us. The scripture that will not leave my heart is that there's many plans in a man's mind, but it is the Lord who establishes her steps, his steps. So I'm just going to share this short testimony with you, and then we're done. So you know my, where my mom's at. She'll be in the hospital two weeks on Monday. We've been up and down and all over the place. I've been there every day this week. Um, my sister's been with me. My husband went with me today. And um, But the thing is, is when she first went in and you got the prayer text, I wanted her to be in Ludington. And I wanted these specific prayers. And I wanted them. Nothing wrong with that. However, when the Lord said, many are the plans in man's mind, I knew immediately not to be making plans in my own mind. That not only did I have plans, but the hospital administrator, coordinator had plans and thought that this is what was going to happen and somebody else had a plan. And none of those plans have come into fruition. But what has come into fruition is my mom's been safe, She's been well cared for by angelic staff, and she's okay. So what happened to me when I received that scripture, and I knew it was from God, I hung on to it. And every time something comes up and I want to make a plan, I remember that many are the plans in a man or a woman's mind but God's going to establish these steps and I'm trusting him. It took me a few days. So can I tell you that when the Lord is speaking to you, especially by the word and his spirit, it may take you a couple of days for it to settle in and for you to really grab a hold of that and get it. But the minute you hear it, it goes in because truth lives inside of me and you. And that is the spirit of the living God. So when you hear a truth that is for you from the word, from the spirit, then that is for you to help you walk out times and seasons of your lives. It might not be for Dan today. It might not be for Cheryl today. 
but it is a truth for me today. So I'm telling you this so that we hear the Lord, we listen to Him, and we tune in so that we can have that truth and allow that truth to have its way in our hearts and our minds. Amen? And so then what you do is you walk in the Spirit now. Because you grab a hold of the truth from the Spirit of God and it changes all of your fleshly stuff that takes you into deep despair, fear, exhaustion, and many other things that you and I aren't meant to carry. So if that's what you didn't do. You had moments of it, but you always knew that Jesus was your strength. So God spoke to her specifically, you know, about certain things. And she had to do the same thing. And you have to do the same thing. And I have to do the same thing. But the cool thing is, is that it truly is the Lord that's taking down those walls of resistance in our lives. Sometimes, like David said, the, raw, the walls we put up there. And the Lord is taking them down today. Amen. And so that you can walk in and you can take the goods. Take that truth and live in that truth and walk in that truth. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. So, Father, I thank you and praise you. You are amazing. There's none like you. I pray, God, that you would have your way in our hearts and minds. I pray, Father, if there's anybody in this room that is carrying a burden that does not belong to them and it's just wrecking them, I pray today that they would surrender that to you. I pray, Lord, that you would speak to each and every person's heart as, as Elsie was pouring her heart out. Um, tonight, if there's anything that anybody just needs to lay down, that they would just do this tonight. And I thank you, God, that you take the ashes that are going to turn to ashes tonight. All those things. And you're going to bring beauty out of them. I thank you that we can trust you. And I thank you that you love us and that you died for us. So, Lord, we just are going to allow the glory of the Lord to rise upon us and that we're going to give testimony for the awesomeness of who you are. In Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.